All right, good afternoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> so we all met yesterday at the opening session. So I'm Joanna and Director of Strategic Marketing and Communication at ICRASAT. So I was asked to give a presentation on a new product that we created last year, uh, which was a, a joint effort between uh, Delip and Modi's area and our strategic marketing area. And it was looking at a new way to make ICRASAT scientific information available and more accessible. Um, so uh, I guess most people here are from institutes that undertake research and so you have a lot of scientific information already being, always being produced. So do most of you have that uh, available through your, your organization's websites? No? You don't? It, the information is not made available through the website? Just not available. Wow. <laughs> Anybody else? Comments? Not made available. Wow. Okay. So when you do make it available, <laughs> which I'm sure you're all going to do after this workshop, uh, one of the most obvious places we, people will expect to find it is on your institute's website. I mean, that'll be their first place they go to to look for your information. Uh, so it's particularly important what they can find there. Um, so at ICRASAT we were looking at redoing the ICRASAT website and as part of the process in doing that we decided, we looked at what was already on there, saw that a lot of scientific information was on there but we also had a lot missing. Uh, and already the website was huge and it was full and it was complicated and there was a big navigation architecture already and if we were to add even more scientific information it was going to be a very heavy website and very complicated to, to find your way through it. So we rethought and we decided to have two institute websites. So one would be purely for the scientific information and one would be the corporate website which could therefore focus more on the issues and could really sell the issues in a better way. Uh, and, and it meant also if we had a separate website for the scientific information, we could design it in a way that most suits scientific information. We weren't constrained by a typical corporate website. So that was our first step in developing this product. Then we had to say, well, what is it going to be? <laughs> what is the best way to make the best, easiest access to our scientific information. And so we came up with uh, an idea, what we called multi-profiler. So there were two parts here, that there were multiple navigations allowed and also when results showed up they were in easy to scan profiles. Now the thinking behind this is in a normal website, you have one way you can navigate to find information. And we found that too restricted because people come looking for your information from different angles. So, for example, some people come to us because they're interested in a particular crop we work on. And so they're looking for something on chickpea. Uh, someone else is interested in climate change. Now, it may be the same piece of information that could satisfy their need, but people have come in from different angles looking for that. And if you've got one navigation structure, you're very restricted. Because if you don't just want a standard navigation, the next thing is then a typical database search. But then when information is presented from a database search, it's not very attractive. You just get lots of results and you've got to click on everything to then see if it's what you want. So we achieved the impossible, thanks to Modi and our team working together, and came up with a completely new information management system. Now, to have, so I'll go back, to have this multiple navigations, first of all, we had to know how were people coming looking for our information. So we defined, now for every institute it's going to be different, and if you were ever to do this, you'd think about for your institute and the type of information you have, what are the different ways people come looking for information? Now for us, we defined five main areas people would come looking for information. One is by topics, so it might be climate change, nutrition, ICT, and so on. Another is by crop, so people come looking for chickpea or pigeon pea or millet, etc. 
Another is by location, because we're working internationally. Some, say a donor, may be interested in what's happening in East Africa. So they just want to come in looking at East Africa. Now they might find information on pigeon pea and on climate change and so forth, but the way they're thinking about it is by a geographic location. Uh, then there's system, with there are different agricultural systems. So we see some people come looking by system. And lastly is resource type. So some people just want to know what data do we have. Or they want to know, look at our publications. They want to come and see the publications. So, so we define for our institute five main ways people might come in and navigate looking for our information. So what we had to do then is we created, I don't know next, yeah. so we created what's called Explore It, where people could find information by any of these five areas. So if, for example, you look at topics, so if they clicked on topics, the menu bar that they see here, now we had to define these subtopics. Uh, so from, I'm not sure if you can read it there, but biofuels, climate change, crop improvement, development pathways, diversification, feed and fodder, etc. Um, so, th and, and we had the same for systems, crops, locations, resources. We had to have all our sub areas. They became our standard metadata. Absolutely every piece of scientific information had to be consistently categorized by one of the topics, the systems, the crops, etc. So then if somebody wanted to, to um, say they clicked on nutrition, the information is presented in, in a profile form. So every piece of information, no matter what you've come looking for, is going to have the same presentation format. So there's a, the heading at the top and a, a small summary and a few statistics. Then we have these horizontal tabs. So there's always an overview. Then there's a few tabs which might vary depending on what you've come and searched for. And then the last four tabs are all the same for every profile. And all that information is automatically generated and fed in. So um, let's see if I've got, got it here. OK, so this is it up closer. Uh, so we get the overview. In this case, this one's chickpea. This overview, this botany, this facts and figures. Under projects, so this was also the very first time we made any information available about our projects. Um, before it was just internally kept in our finance and our projects area. Um, so we had to create a database behind this that would feed the summary project information. And if you clicked, so if you clicked on the little button there, it, it would expand and you'd get a little more information about the projects. Um, same with then the next tab, publications, is automatically fed. So we had key publications and all publications. So key publications we did manually select, but they were tagged in a database, and so they automatically fed. And then all publications, I got it there, yeah, is automatically generated from a query and an RSS feed from our library database. Uh, now sometimes there's there might be a thousand publications because if you've got something very popular like chickpea, there's a lot of publications, which is why we created a key publications section. So at least some people could come in and get the bigger overview picture if they didn't want to look through a thousand publications. <laughs> um, the next tab was stories and more. So again, um, none of this was organized ahead of previously in any databases. So we had to set up a database behind the scenes, which used, again, the same metadata and would automatically feed. So if, if you had a story that was about chickpea being used to deal with climate change in Ethiopia, it would show up in all those profiles, chickpea, climate change, Ethiopia. So because you're using the same metadata, it doesn't matter how people have come looking for your information, it's going to show up. And it doesn't matter that information is showing up more than once, which is different to the normal thinking on a corporate website where you think you have to have information in one place. Um, but through the use of the metadata, it can show up no matter how you've come looking for the information. So here we've got stories and we have videos. We're going through the process now of adding posters, slideshows and other items. And then data, again we didn't have 
Uh, well, well ICRASAT doesn't have one central data database for all data. Plus we didn't have an inventory. So we had to make an inventory. We had to put uh, summaries and descriptions of all data on a database behind this that would feed it. So if you had data that was across two or more topics, so it might have been climate change data but also about irrigation or something like that, then it would show up in both the profiles. So you'd know what data was available. So I'll come back to that one. So I might actually just go live as well and show you. Hopefully it works live. Okay. So this is what we ended up calling Explore It at ICRASAT. So, so under topics, you could get your list of topics. Oops, I can go back. Or you can get your list of systems. Or you get your list of crops. The locations, which actually um, we've only just in the last couple of weeks added um, all the country locations. And then resources, which are data, projects, publications, stories and more. So if we look at, for example, let's go to ICT. If we look at the topic ICT, so go to the top. Okay, so it's again you see it's the exact same profile, uh, the, the layout, uh, with a um, heading, a summary and some few key statistics. Then if you go down there's the horizontal tabs. In this case, it's just one main horizontal tab, which is overview. And you can scroll down and get quite a lot of information about ICT in agriculture. And then there's projects. So you'll see a list of, of all the projects. And we have it split by current projects and completed projects. So if you look at the first project, if you click you get the expanded version. I'm not sure if that is large enough for you to read, but you see the project title. You see Deleep's the project contact person. You see the, the donor is Columbia University in USA. If the project has a website, that's there. And then there's a summary description. OK. And then same with publications. And it comes. Yeah. So you've got key publications and then you've got all publications which is being automatically generated from the library database. Uh, and stories and more. We've that's still coming up I think, but there's stories, there's videos, and there's a poster there on the open access repository. Uh, now, I'll show a few extra features that we've added as well and working on. Uh, okay. So some of the features is we, at the very top there, we have a sign up for latest information. Now, the idea here is most of your institutes might have a newsletter, do you? Yeah. So the idea here is that people can sign up for customized information. So they can sign up for any one of those topics, crops, geographic areas or systems, or resource types. So they, so rather than sending mass information to everybody, they can receive only what's most important to them. So if they are only interested in climate change or they're only interested in information from India, they can sign up just for that. And they'll get customized updates on when we add any data, stories, videos, new projects, publications, etc. Um, now what we're doing at the moment is people can sign up, but we're actually still building the uh, system behind it to generate all this automatically. Um, some other but what but the reason we kept it so people could still sign up is when we launched this, we didn't want to lose the opportunity of people signing up early on. So we wanted to catch them early. <laughs> And then once we've got the system built behind it, it'll all be all automated and they can get automatic updates just on their, their area of interest. Uh, other features there is convert profile to PDF. So this is interesting. I can show you this live. So if we're on the ICT profile and if we click on convert to PDF, 
every information under every one of those tabs is collated together into one PDF document. So that's it here. You see it here. It goes down and then it'll have um, all the publications and everything there. So that's uh, a nice feature that makes it very useful for people to be able to take the information away with them. Uh, of course, always um, uh, Facebook like and always a share. So if you click on share, you get a lot of the, all the usual social media sharing options. So if you go on share, then you've got Facebook, Twitter, Google+, Pinterest and so on. So always a, a basic feature you have to have with everything. <laughs> okay. And another feature is is a, a feedback, which is also on the front page. So there's an automatic feedback form just to encourage people to give us feedback. Um, okay. Just two other nice features is on the home page, we have a fact of the day. Now that fact comes from, you might, you'll remember at the beginning of every profile, we have a few statistics and facts. So we have them in, an, in the CMS behind it and they randomly change and show there, and then there's read more, which takes you to one of those profiles. So it's just another way to interest people and bring them in to explore it. Uh, and yes, at the bottom, again, send us your feedback, and it's the feedback form there to fill out. Um, so that that's uh, a very quick overview of why we set it up, uh, what we're trying to achieve. We're doing it in phases because there was so much to achieve. We could have been years working on it and never gone live. So uh, from the idea that came in December 2002, we launched it about nine months later, which was very, very fast <laughs> with a lot of stress, <laughs> as Maudie will know as well. Um, and, um, and then we're adding more features, adding more content, with any institute, and you'll probably know yourselves, it's it's a huge effort just collecting the information, knowing what's there, going to scientists, getting processes in place of how you can more consistently collect what information is being generated. Probably the only and the most organized information was were the publications, because the library is well established and has been collecting it and they have good systems for, bibliographic systems for collecting and holding information. But everything else we had to start from scratch. So it was a huge job and we continue to get better processes to make sure we're capturing all the scientific information. Um, another step also is we've still got to do a lot more in promoting that Explore It exists. Uh, we've started doing a few things like trying to get all staff on the bottom of their email signatures to to include Explore It. On all the ICRASAT stationery, we use both URLs now, the ICRASAT.org and the Explore It, because they're our two corporate websites. Um, when we This year we're now developing the corporate website, because when we decided to split the website, the Institute website, into two, we had to do the scientific website first because otherwise where could we put the scientific information? So, so that had to be done first. So this year we're now doing the corporate website and the idea in that is for any detail it'll be linked to Explore It. Um, so, so it keeps the corporate website cleaner and lighter, more focused on the key points, but then any detail and the scientific information is in Explore It. So slowly we'll have a lot more cross-referencing. Uh, we're trying in the newsletter, anytime we have articles about a scientific topic, to say, for more information, go to, and we can use the profile and explore it. And this doesn't stop anybody creating their own information products, because all this does is give access to it. Like, Dilip, have you talked about KSI Connect and the whole seminar series? You, oh, Maudie has? Okay. So you've heard about KSI Connect and how they do a seminar series. So all scientific presentations are in that one spot. So now what we then do is we use our metadata for Explore It and it's automatically fed. So every time they put up a, a new um, video or seminar video on KSI Connect, then we tag it by whether it's 
say if it was someone talking about climate change in West Africa. It will automatically feed into both our West Africa and our climate change profiles and it will be under that video section. So the idea is this is just access so people know what's there. It doesn't stop any other products being created and the more that are created the better as long as we capture it, as long as we know and make sure it gets fed in. So it's cross-promoting all those products all the time. Um, okay, so that's an overview. I think Modi later is going to explain technically what we did behind it. So as I said at the beginning, this was a team effort with KSI and, and um, Modi and Delete and the whole area really coming up with the technical solutions, whereas we were thinking about it from the marketing side. You know, how do people come looking for information? What do they need? How can we best present that? So we gave all the, we just had to say what we wanted. We gave all the challenges to their team who had to work out how to actually achieve that. Um, but it, I think it's also a good example uh, if you're developing something to try to bring in the marketing or the communications people with the technical people because I think the partnership meant that we, you know, were able to create something really unique. Um, so open for questions and all the technical difficult questions to Modi. Oh, can I do that? Okay. <laughs> it wasn't easy, I know that. <laughs> I, I don't think you were here at the beginning, Dalip. I asked people who has their scientific information available on their, their institute website and nearly everybody said, no, it's not even available there. <laughs> so. I think uh, one of the things is that, um, you know, Having so much of research and then boiling it down into simple terms is actually a very difficult thing. So I think mm -hmm. uh, both uh, the lip and you need to be you know, really congratulated about and probably this is also giving us a good idea how do we separate because this was uh, a question which we were facing as an organization because there is a, a, a aspect of agricultural research up there and the other parts of the organization which do other social social programs so therefore uh, you know these people you know agriculture uh, scientists keep producing so much of data so how do you filter it down how where do you put it how do you do you know decongest so called decongest the website and I think it was a great idea to you know have two websites and have some linkages done mm -hmm. so so thank you I'll show you um one of the databases behind this. So when we needed our information on our projects, we needed all the stories, the videos, PowerPoints, everything else like that collected, because um, they weren't even collected before and they were sitting on different people's computers. Or, um, so we had to create a database behind Explore It um, and Modi can say more on it, but it, this is an open source database where if you can read it down the side, so we have projects, posters, data sets. Now with data sets, it's not the data, it's just the inventory with a summary on each data set. Um, and so if I maybe just click click on search, it'll, it'll give you a list. But it was a nice database, so it gives us a list. So we've got uh, nearly 2,000 resources in here. We're still to add photos. There's a lot more to do in many, many future phases. Um, and then you click and it gives you a summary or you can download, etc. And what we did is for PowerPoints, we put them in SlideShare and then we just have the information about it in the database here. Same with videos. They're all put on YouTube, but it's just the metadata and the summary information that's here. Um, Eventually when we get photos here, the photos will be in Flickr, but all the metadata and information will be here. So we're not 
having a huge database that uh, needs to have a lot of storage, etc. And plus, you still want to use those other sites because they're also good ways for people to access your information. So the idea is not explore it has the information. It actually just gives you the access to wherever the information is. Um, so it doesn't become so heavy. Okay. Yeah. The publications. Yeah. So same here. Yeah. So when when I showed you the profiles, if I go back to one of the profiles, let's say go to a a crop one this time. So we get a chickpea, which is a large one. So you'll see the large. So if you click on publications, first of all, you'll get key publications. Which, if you click to get one of them, if you can, you probably can't see the URL there, but it's the Open Access Repository URL. Ah, oh, thanks. Um, but if you go click on all publications, so this is generating it now, um, live from the Open Access Repository. So this will take a bit longer because chickpea, there's going to be thousands <laughs> of entries. Uh, so we use a query, and then we use an RSS feed to bring it into here. Um, and then if you click on the detail of any of the publications you want to see more, it'll take you directly to the open access repository where it's sitting. Um, so, so yes, so the idea was not to repeat anything, <laughs> uh, but just make the access to the information. So you can go to one place, you can see it, and it's easy to find. And, yeah, and hopefully the profile idea meant that it, it's a nice way to present the information that draws you in a bit more. Yeah, so it's taking a long time here. Hopefully not normally that long. <laughs> Other questions? There we go. So it says, let's see if it says how many resources. Right, so there's five pages of, of publications. Think again. Okay. So who's going to create and explore it? <laughs> no easy to access the first behind Sorry? It's yeah. huge. And we did have big teams. I mean like we had we had the marketing team and the IT team. Um, on the marketing team, you know, we had to bring in writers as well to help. Because all the overview tabs and a some of these first ones, they were manu manually written. Now, we don't think we'll have to update them every 18 months, maybe two years, which is still going to be a big job, but uh, that will be good enough. But all the rest are automatically updated continually. Yeah. But yes, putting it together is a huge, huge team job, <laughs> teamwork. <laughs> so, as Dr. Joanna has explained, this is a unique way of presenting a research information. Various categories are there and then you proof, input it in an individual profile and profile will have lots of detail and other. So if, if I see from technical point of view and other, this is a good example of dynamic size. Whenever you visit, the content will not be seen. Every time you come across something new. So vibrating, dynamic and all that. Because it draws the content from so many places. It, it So it we don't have to put up a too much effort directly to update anything on this site. But it harvests the information from so many other repositories and sites and all that. So this is what I'll try and tell you now. I can we can I can talk about a one more example, which is a very good dynamic and harvesting site, the CGIR website. So I'll just show you as an example. Initially, we thought that somebody from consortium office will take a half an hour session on you know, demystifying the, how the site is working. But because of time delay and all that, we couldn't bank on them. So, so this is a CGIR website.
Now this is almost 95% of the content are dynamic. So what they have is only the links and all that. And whenever you go inside, automatically the, the information will be generated. So if you go to events, information is generated dynamically. Or if you go to any other tab, media or consortium news. So wherever you see this page, it will be different. So they, they, they harvest the information from Ikrisad website, they harvest the information from Eri website or wherever. So there are mechanism in place, lots of no, the codes are in place which will harvest the information. So this is another example of very good dynamic and no, the, the harvesting website which harvests the information from so many other platforms. But lots of effort has gone, in, gone into the planning. When they launch it, they almost taken a year to design an architecture and all that. And then it's easy to change it, modify the code and all that. So this is another example. Now, there was an emphasis on creating a institutional repositories. So if you want to build a really a good vibrating and dynamic website, first you have to think about building an institutional repository. So when you try to build a repository, from where you start? So let, let's, let's try and understand what, what type of objects you will be storing in that repository. You have got some example. So maybe I will try and use this board. Like the tabs are giving you some example. So what type of object you will be storing? The projects. Yeah, projects will be there. Then publication is another thing. Then success stories or stories. Then media 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 clippings, video. Maybe news also, any news item, article relating to a particular topic in your organization or service. Any other resources you can think of? Profiles of scientists. Yeah. Profile of scientists. It's a good thing. Which we don't have it, but we have it somewhere else. So, profile of scientists. Project will have a multiple option, ongoing project, you can have a complete, we have to complete it and ongoing, you can have some more also. Training calendar. Training calendar. You can have a calendar, but then you are changing a focus. The calendar may not fit into a repository. Now, in case of Hickory side, we were having this information in some of the platform present. And some information was not there, so we have to create a repository. So we have identified one open source platform resource space. So this is a platform we have identified and what we do is like these objects are again, not all the objects are stored inside, but the metadata and some, some, some introductory information is stored in this repository. So your videos are in a YouTube or they may be in some other place. So what we do is, for each video, you create a metadata where title will be there, who are the, what is the activity relating to that video and some more information. So let's see what what type of information is there in video? It's okay. Take a smile. And go to search. So about video, what we store is 
what are the keywords so this video is relating to what topics and what systems and all that what location the title and maybe some description this video about what and all that so this is the only information we store in youtube url so we are not actually storing a video here similarly if you have a image repository so you need not store all the images here but you can store a metadata and a data which describes that object that you store it here or let's let's take some other like posters so this is a poster and what information we are storing about the poster again those keywords are there description author which department or individual and if this poster is available somewhere on internet the link like it's on slide share so this is how you create a repository so again we are not you don't need a very powerful server like terabytes and all that to create this repository you need a mid level server and you can have all the point uh, records relating to pointing to some of the object so and this is how you create a object repository then how you can harvest the information like where where we were here no? so when we build this platform what we have done is this was built using a drupal it's a once again open source platform so it will allow you to create the structures in a drupal with very little effort you can create it but if you have to customize the format and all that then you have to do a code modification so you need a professional service once you create the layout and all that then how you link the object so now you heard about web 1 web 2 and web 3 no so web 1 was a static kind of thing web 2 dynamic it allow you to comment it and all that and web 3 is like a semantic web where based on keyword and all that it does lot of automatic linking and all that so this is a combination of web 2 and web 3 so when we when we try and harvest the information from other thing what are the things we can use normally if if if, if any site offers a, say rss feed you have to use a rss feed so from youtube if you want to get a information relating to particular topic or particular account or all that you can have a url with the rss feed and you will get all the information in xml format which you can reformat and throw it on the screen so this is a one way of harvesting information from a platform like youtube or a, just some kind of public open platform if you are harvesting information from say wordpress blog it also offers a rss feed and all that when we started we take a very difficult route we first try to harvest information directly from databases like uh, we were having this information in a resource space when we try to pull a resource resource space information into explore it what we do is we were using codes to connect to database and fetch the information it was in a way efficient but what was happening is it's a difficult route and from security point of view it is more vulnerable because when harvesting is done and all that some part of the code if you go to source it becomes visible and there maybe you are revealing some more information about database and other and therefore the whole setup and database was becoming a vulnerable and there are other thing also when you harvest information from one platform to another if you try to harvest information in a very raw format the character set used in a one platform it's not fully compatible with the character set of other platform you may end up getting information distorted like if you use a euro sign or those things it may appear as a euro sign in a resource space or in a youtube but here it may show you as a different symbol so these were the challenges so we have taken a one fresh route called api 
so some of these open source platform like wordpress blog or even google uh, moodle or even this one they offer a api which you have to customize a programming modules which will automatically fetch a data and then make it available to the other other side so that you have to customize again provide a proper privileges and authorization and then you can harvest the information and this is how like the 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 information about say stories and more so videos and all that we are harvesting from resource space but we are harvesting through api so it's more efficient way and quicker way of doing the thing and the formatting and codes are written in such a way that the url is harvested so if you like to see this video you click at it and traffic is going into youtube so this is how the architecture was built I'll, I'll try and show you something more on resource space so this is a resource space and if you if if we go to some more technical detail so various database internally resource space call it as resource type so these are the resource space resource type it's it's a category of object no like stories are here data sets are here and all that and you can create as many as possible now good thing about it is like in all institutional object repository there will be some common field like title then this object relating to what activity what profile it could be a system or topic or crop or all that so common common field you can put it as a global field so they will whatever resources you create here automatically those fields will be repeated and then you can create a say individual resources for a specific field which is native to only that type of resource so this is how we have built a database structure within resource space and then we can start entering information and all that and then it will be harvested by explore it or whatever way you want so resource space make the information av again available in rss speed so if you have to harvest information from say resource space to any other thing you can uh, use rss feed and harvest it so this is one way of uh, creating a very complex complex architecture which serves the purpose and tomorrow if you have to add say profile of the scientist or any other it's very easy i can add one more type of resource and then we'll put a data and we have to decide and explore it what are the additional tab it will come and then quickly i mean it will work now drupal has its own cms so what we do is some of the object we are storing into that cms directly and then it will get into the explore it main web presentation so this is how the whole structure was designed about explore it and resource space and here we are banking on social media also tomorrow we we may try to link up a facebook and yammer and other thing into explore it i mean it's, it's a very vague idea but if need arise we may do that it will not be too difficult to link it because we have a basic architecture in a place or if some new social media platform comes up on video or even cross linking object and all that we may do that so it's a very good example of web 2 and web 3 and again this these are not very expensive thing but it cost a lot to the organization because it too big team was working on it for such a very long time a web masters and it people on one side then on content side on information architecture and other the strategic marketing and communication office team dr jonas group and all that so we have a continuous meeting continuously looking for updates and improvement and all that in terms of presentation information and all that so it it cost a lot in terms of effort and manpower but otherwise this has not cost us a very 
huge amount uh, roughly jona we spend on only that uh, building a code no so maybe 10 15000 something Like that, or maybe less than ten thousand yeah, dollars in both the first phase and second phase. Yeah, I think technically less than ten thousand, and then at the very beginning we got in a few writers, so we spent maybe ten thousand on that just to get us that head start. But we wouldn't employ anyone from now on. We do the rest okay. ourselves. Okay. Okay. Now I don't have that information. I would have shared its access log and statistics. I also forget to bring it, but. this this is getting a good uh, visibility and it helps increase it in you no know, i mean presenting the information in a very focused way and i encourage you to look at uh, like the all the the, the mandate crops are here so when we when we divide the whole research information into profile first we look at a mandate crops and then our mandate crops are in two main category dry land cereals and grain legumes so this is how it was divided then we have a offices in all the location so in a first phase we take care of all location india mali niger kenya uh, malawi and uh, zimbabwe and then later on we have added some uh, more location in a second phase then we have the system in a place no like these are the system thrust test area identify in our vision and mission document and 2020 planning and all that so those documents and exercise help us in the deciding the systems uh, art well of system headings and all that and topics this was lot of brainstorming is was done with the scientists and all that the various group across the organization and this is how we identify the list and this talks about only the ecrisat research information so when when you when you select a, a topic say crop improvement some information is available in a public domain like some basic profile and all that and then all this information is about ecrisat research so we are not combining other information which is available in public domain into this like whether it's a project or publication or all that now publication the all list of publication is in open access repository and there we are using a one platform called epri but then challenge was how to harvest it so we are harvesting it using it rss feed so publication has a two tab key publication and all publication the key publication we are storing it in a content management system of a drupal for explore it so this records are stored internally and all publication dynamically it will harvest from oar that is why it's taking more time it'll take more time only first then very quickly second third time it'll take it and when you click on something it'll point to there so all the detail will be available from open access repository So I'll show you two sites: the CGR website and Explore It. They are a good example of dynamic website harvesting the content. Contents are all the time changing, and most current information will be available here. It's not outdated, or it's not that some some recent thing has been left out from this. So we are achieving a variety of purpose by building this platform and this type of architecture. So, any questions or yeah? So this one, the place, yeah, please, please. No, no, all the location, all the location. Yeah, please. Yeah, this is available. Ah, uh, you. if you want to harvest say any information from any profile you can you have to add that rss question mark equal to that command and the feed will be produced from this so it's available from explore it as well as from resource space